Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my channel WINS Academy for Competitive Exams. In this video, we are going to see introduction about embedded and real-time systems. Our learning objectives are what is meant by embedded system, what is firmware, special features of embedded system, applications, categories of embedded system, embedded system architecture. First, let us see what is an embedded system. So, embedded means something that is attached to another thing. So, embedded system means it consists of hardware and a software. A combination of a hardware and software is called as an embedded system. So, here software is used for controlling the hardware. So, in embedded system, microcontroller or microprocessor is the basic unit. That is, if you are using microcontroller means then it is called as microcontroller based system. If you are using microprocessor means then it is called as microprocessor based system. So, embedded system is used to perform a specific task. This is very, very important thing for a specific application or if you want to perform a specific task, we go for an embedded system. So, our best example is fire alarm system. So, fire alarm system senses the smoke that comes out from the fire and gives an alarm as the output. So, it will sense only the smoke. So, it is designed for a specific task. Next, what is a firmware? So, firmware, firmware, already we have studied hardware, software. So, firmware means the embedded software is called as firmware. That is, uh, embedded system means uh, it is a combination of hardware and software. Here, the software which is embedded in a hardware is called as firmware. So, firmware is a software program or a set of instructions programmed on the hardware device. So, next we are going to see special features of embedded system. So, embedded system is designed for a very specific task. For a particular task, we can use an embedded system. Right, then it cannot be programmed to different things. Also, it has a very limited resources, that is limited memory. Also, it should work against some deadlines. It should satisfy some deadlines. Right, also. It is highly reliable. Reliable means it should operate in an extreme environmental condition. Even though there is a change in temperature, pressure or humidity, anything, it should not affect our system. So, these are the special tests of embedded system. So, the next one is applications. So, first one is consumer appliances. That is digital camera, electronic toys, remote. So, these are all embedded system that we are using in our day to day life. Then office automation. In the office, we will be using copying machine, fax machine, etc. So, this comes under office automation application. Industrial automation. So, industrial auto automation means monitoring the temperature, pressure, humidity, etc. Then medical electronics, EEG, ECG, blood pressure measurement, we will be using an embedded system. Also, in telecommunications, key telephones, ISDN telephones, web cameras. So, these are the applications of embedded system other applications are instrumentation instrumentation means in lab and all we will be using oscilloscope spectrum analyzer so these are also embedded system only then security so biometric system nowadays we are using this biometric system in many places for security purpose so these all comes under the applications of embedded system next we are going to see categories of embedded system so, there are four categories. One is standalone embedded system. The second one is real time embedded system. Third one is networked information appliances. And the fourth one is mobile devices. So, first we are going to see embedded system. So, from the name itself, we can understand standalone mode. So, the standalone embedded system operates in standalone mode. It will take the input signals, it will process it, and produce the desired output. Example, digital camera, microwave oven and CD player, etc. So, the next one is real-time embedded system. If you want to do a specific work in a specific time period, then it is called as real-time embedded system. So, for example, if you want to open a valve in 30 milliseconds, when the temperature crosses a particular limit, then it is a real-time embedded system. 
But in real-time embedded system, there are two types. One is hard real-time embedded system and another one is soft real-time embedded system. Hard real-time embedded system means here in this example, if the valve is not opened, what happens? The temperature exceeds the limit and the burner may burst, right? So a big catastrophe may occur. This is the hard real-time embedded system. Soft real-time embedded system means, for example, we are controlling uh, the DVD player using a remote. In the remote, if you are pressing a play button, it may take a few milliseconds to get operated. That means to play the videos. So this delay will not affect anything, right? So this is called as soft real-time embedded system. So the next one is network information appliances. So, network information appliances means through internet, LAN or WAN, we can uh, communicate, right? So, here we are having a desktop computer, through internet, we are monitoring the weather. This is a weather monitoring system. So, the, from the weather monitoring system, the data are taken through the internet to the desktop computer. So, this is network information appliances. The best example is automatic door lock system. So, if a child is returning from school, the parent is walking in the system means he knows uh, who is standing in front of the door through the web camera. So, he will automatically open the door using the desktop. So, this is called as automatic door lock system. So, the next one is mobile devices. Mobile devices such as mobile phone, smartphone, etc. are a special category of embedded systems. Embedded system architecture. There are two architectures. One is layered architecture of embedded system and another one is hardware architecture of embedded system. First, we are going to see layered architecture of embedded system. Already we have seen embedded system means it consists of hardware and a software. When we go for complex systems, application software itself is not enough. We need an operating system to operate this software. So, we use an operating system, but for a small appliances, we no need this operating system. So, this is the layered architecture of embedded system. The next one is hardware architecture of embedded system. So, this is the hardware architecture. It consists of central processing unit, input devices, output devices, ROM, RAM, application specific circuitry and communication interfaces. So, these are the building blocks. So, first is CPU. CPU means central processing unit. So, it can be a microprocessor, microcontroller or digital signal processor. Anything it can be, right? So, if it is a microcontroller means it is a low cross processor and there may be many components within the single chip. For small application, microcontroller is the best choice. But for larger application, we go for microprocessor based system because here we can add many external components with the microprocessor. Then digital signal processor. This is used in audio and video processing applications. The next one is memory. So two types of memory is that RAM and ROM. RAM means random access memory. ROM means read only memory. So, when the power is switched off, the contents is erased in RAM memory. So, it is a temporary storage memory. ROM means it retains the contents even if the power is switched off. So, permanently we can store the data. So, our software will be stored in the ROM memory only. So, firmware. In a embedded system, you will be saying the word as firmware. So, firmware is stored in ROM. The next one is input devices. Many embedded system will have small keypad, press one key to give a specific command. Some of the embedded system may not have the input devices, but it takes the inputs from the sensors. Output devices. So, if you want to display the output, we can use LCDs, alarms or LEDs, etc. For example, that uh, fire alarm system. So, in that alarm is the output. Then communication interfaces. When we interface through internet or LAN or WAN or anything, the embedded system need to interact with other embedded system using these interfaces. That is RS-232, USB, RS-422, Ethernet, etc. So, the last one is application specific circuitry. So, application specific circuitry means for our application special circuits may be used. So, these circuits are called as application specific circuitry. Sensors, transducers and special processing and control circuitry can may be required for the embedded system depending on its application. Now, we have come to the end of the session. 
I hope you all have understood. If you like this video, kindly subscribe it and press the bell button so that you can get the notifications regarding my future videos. Thank you.